There's a guy, a friend of mine, and he bought, he says he bought a shitload, a mountain of raspberry pies. That's a lot of raspberry yeah. pies. And he says, I mean, literally, you should see it and perhaps be a bit worried. <laughs> Uh, and then he says, I'm, I think I'm, I'm enough percentage intoxicated to start soldering. <laughs> After 10 beers and a half a liter of vodka. <laughs> he's always like that. He's always drunk. Say, but say. He's, very, he's a very interesting dude. He's like a, like a mad scientist. He's, he's crazy. He comes up with the, with the weirdest shit, you know? Like, uh, like with him, I can talk about stuff that I can really talk with, like, with nobody. I can talk to you about nobody. You don't have to Genghis Khan descend to his level? No, no, no. He, uh, he, uh, he's like, uh, like oh, way up there. He's way up there. He's funny. Uh, he's so funny. I like condescending. Yeah. Like, there's so many. Dude, there's a lot of... And he lives in the middle of the forest in, uh, in Finland. <laughs> What does fin mean? Fin. Yeah, like the fish. Does it mean like those fins of fish? What the fuck does it mean? I don't know. I don't know what what it. But 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 the funny thing is, the Finnish language is written completely different than Hungarian, but they're related. What other con words are there? We got condescending, get, comic con. Comic con is my favorite. It's like the Genghis Khan of comics. Um, I thought I thought it was like selling somebody a first edition comic, which is not the first edition, a comic con. Yeah, but that's that's also. But well, we, we're just doing the K's, the K words. It's what con, 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 con. Ah, the con, the con, the con. The con. I'm a con, man. It's a con, it's a con. I'm a con, man. You're just a con, man. <laughs> <laughs> con, come on, man. <laughs> you from the Clueless Clucks clan? <laughs> Clueless Clucks clan. The Clueless clan, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. They're funny. They're the, funny. I'm the Clue Clucks clan. <laughs> Clue Clucks clan. One fool over the Clue Clucks clan. Wait, what is it? Is it the Ku Klux Klan? What the K L U? I'm losing track of what the real words are here. How do you spell K Clue? What is, what is K K K Clue K L U? What the fuck is it? Yeah. What does that yeah, mean? I don't know. Probably, uh, probably an abbreviation of something. Ku Klux Klan. Um, so uh, I think the Comic Con. Clue, clue probably means uh, uh, a clueless, low life, underage or something. <laughs> oh. I don't know. Yeah, I really don't know. I really don't know. Oh, we got five con words: condescending, comic con, I'm a con man, clueless, Klux clan, and clue Klux con. We'll we'll post that because that's kind of funny. Like we don't give a shit. That 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 is a uh, part of the game. So listen, yo, in the real version, when we play in the future, like you'll ha- you'll have a Rolodex at your house, and in that Rolodex will be every unique phrase of mine and every unique phrase, everything. But when we actually play, you do not have to touch those cards, right? All you have to do is speak either the text of the card or just the code word that activates the card. Like you can play the you can play this game with no cards at all. I mean, your computer, your phone probably will have to listen. To keep to keep track, but you can just do it by talking, right? So it really just becomes the World Joker tour. People trying to entertain each other and make each other laugh and make each other think and, and blow each other's minds and improve the overall quantity times quality of our rhymes. Uh, the things are the things the words I like usually are the words like uh, where you can just change one letter and then or like swap it or change it with somebody with some other letter like. Like uh, bl- uh, bl- blowing minds is mowing the blinds. Yeah, one of my, one of my favorites. Changing it up, and uh, but the, th- the thing is, I used to do that a lot. I used to do that a lot, and then at some point I was in the job interview, and I started doing it during the job interview, and I got so confused that I couldn't talk myself out of it. And <laughs> it was funny. I mean, one of my uh, I'm pulling up one of my favorite one of my fa- actually an idea I really like I'm putting up in uh, Marshalls. 
It's uh, this this is literally an idea that used to be something else, right? I just like the name. I just like the name, and it was a stupid idea. I mean, it was an interesting idea, but one that never would have been practical. Like you know how they at like a hockey game, you know they turn the boards to display different advertising. You know, it's like a triangle sign, and it just rotates. Like it used to be something like that, but like double sided blinds, and it was really stupid. It was a super weak idea. Do you know what color blinds are now? No, I don't know what you're talking about. Um, color blinds. Because you said uh, you were talking about switching up letters and stuff, yeah. right, and sounds. Color blinds are, are dry erase window blinds, right? They go in the, like, the window of your house where the sun shines through the most. And they pull down and they lock nice and tightly. And then the kid can do all sorts of beautiful like colored drawings. When you let the blinds back up, they erase perfectly. And they before they erase, they scan all the drawings. So anything you write, when you let it go back up, it creates a file of whatever you wrote. So it's kind of like a white paper blind. And also for little kids. And they're not even expensive. And that's mad money. Mad money. And when the sun shines through, like it, it kind of like it. Hopefully, we we can use a chemical composition such that the light kind of glows, so that the the, the, the they take like it's kind of like stained ink. Hopefully, we'll see. My kitty cat is back again. I mean, wouldn't wouldn't attention. wouldn't you like to have like a fucking like a, a disappearing beautiful whiteboard, like? What, near where you stand, like something you could just like fucking write on, or even just talk to. I mean, talking to it would be harder because then you need a printer. Why? Well, because if you're if you're if you're just like you got a note board on the wall, right? Like, what is what what do you have that's like a whiteboard? What do you have in your primary? Uh, well, I ha- I have um, I have one of those architects draw- architects drawing tables uh, standing in my in my living room. I mean, I do too. Now, wh- what is on top of it? Paper, just just paper. <laughs> yeah, and uh, with some designs on it. I usually, I mean, I, I I I design in the computer, but but when I sketch, you know, when I sketch, I do it on the on the on the on the on the architect table. You know, I just put up some paper and take a pen and do some freehand sketching. Now, like, wh- like 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 visualize the to like pre visualizing it before I start in the computer. All right, so let's do that then. Let's, because I have one of those too, but it's old and it's not like it's got it's got a, a, a horizontal ruler slide on it, but nothing else. Yeah, it, well, mine got horizontal, vertical, everything. It's like, but it's got some holes in the table. But I, uh, I some, somebody used it to drill uh, drill shit on. I've got some holes, and I I, I close them up. I, I I close the holes up, but it's still not like completely flat. Have you ever? Um, have you ever used a scroll for anything writing wise, like a real scroll? No. All right. So, do you do you? How much do you handwrite? How much do you like write shit down with a pen or pencil? Ooh, a ton. Yeah. I mean, I write a lot. I mean, uh, no, you know, like when I when I when I have this I have this black book, which is next to my bed, and when I wake up in the middle of the night, I don't want to watch screens, you know, because they wake me up. Right. So I can not just uh, I'll just. Uh, write down or draw or whatever what, I, what, I'm, what, I'm, what comes to mind so what like I, I mean I love scrolls I fucking love them and I actually believe like oh and, and when I write I haven't been writing by hand for a while right I do have a clipboard and a pen and a, and a ruler in my in my in my computer bag but like I write using a ruler right always when I write the bottom line is always such that my pen stops right so, it, I mean, I'm very anal. Like, a lot of people just write ugly fucking notes, right? They write freehand notes, and to anybody else, unless they have beautiful handwriting, those notes look like shit. They just look like shit. Like, I see my friends that are creative, and they take notes, and I look at their notes, and I want to fucking punch both of us in the face at the same time. Because it looks so, like, ugh. So, I am basically holding a whole clipboard when I'm writing, right? Right? But I'm only writing one line at a time, right? I'm only fucking writing one line at a time, almost all the time. We're not talking about drafting, you know, we're not talking about sketches and shit. We're just talking about writing. So you can basically take something that's, at a minimum, no bigger than a ruler and kind of, like, you could take, like, your left hand and kind of hold it in front of you pointing to the right. 
and and in something just the size of that ruler, you have a whole line, right? A perfectly framed line, maybe like a centimeter and a half tall, depending on how you write. And you can look at anything, right? So you can look up at the sunset and write perfectly. And it doesn't, like, you don't end up with messy lines. Like, you end up staying within the basic frame of that line. And the instant you're done with that line, you just touch the right side, right? You just touch the right side like a typewriter. And and because it's a little thicker than a ruler and it does have a scroll inside of it, you just get to the next line. Like, you literally just get to the next line. And all you're carrying with you is this one, just a big enough space to write a sentence. That's it. And when you go home, you can obviously feed it into its dock and the whole scroll can be pulled out and scanned. And you can also store that scroll. Like, this is the original shit that I wrote. It's on a fucking scroll. I can put it in a wind-up reader and by pressing the, the, the softest button on the right side after I've wound it up, it will move up one line at a time. I mean, when people read, sometimes they want three lines at a time. But when you're writing, if you're really writing and you just want to be at the tip of the pen, getting rid of like a clipboard or a whole notepad makes sense. And if you're just, even if you're just reading a story, it, it make to me in a lot of cases it makes so much more sense to lay back in a chair, in the, in darkness and look at the sky, and and see individual letters like projected in front of you. There's no argument that I can see for displaying 860 words on a page at one time. It just it just drastically lowers the ability to have high enough fidelity uh, per word. It just makes it more expensive and a lower quality e-reader if you're using a, a portrait rectangle. For true deep reading, that does, that's not the future. Like we can make something, I think, we can make an e-reader that's also an e-writer that's fucking brilliant and small too. And I think people will use it and they'll be like, you know what, fuck dude, I can put my arm the way I'm really comfortable and I can fucking, or I can hold it in my hand and I can look at a tree and I can write a whole book without look, looking at what I'm writing. And if I happen to be an anal creative, that's solved for me too, because shit just doesn't turn into a hot mess. Like when you're done, you could say to somebody, I just wrote a chapter of a book with my own fucking pen, and the whole shit is there. Like the whole thing. Like you don't need a fucking multi thousand dollar computer to what I do, to do what I do. You can do it really cheap. And I, I think writing's important. Like I'm I'm almost done typing. I'm just gonna write by hand or talk for the rest of my life. I'm I'm like Typing is fun for a minute, but like, it's just, it's not a great way to write, I don't think. Like, say what you gotta say, or think about it really carefully and write it with your fucking pen. You know, I think. Carve that shit in a marble, bro. Oh, fuck, yeah, it's good to chat with you. Um, no, colorblinds, though, colorblinds will make a billion dollars in 20 years. They will make, a, 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 like, they actually replace our magnetic whiteboards, like, 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 <laughs> magnetic ink, like magnet ink, like the true magnet ink, the true 3D fucking ink, like that, that, that is going to sell a billion dollars worth of ink in the next 20 years. A billion dollars worth of trillions and trillions and trillions and trillions and trillions and trillions of microscopic dark black ferrous particles. Real have ink. You seen, uh, have you seen the programmable tattoos? Nah. You you can have like a, you can inject some ink or something in your in your arm, and you can tattoo yourself with with the ink, and then and then you can uh, you can just program the ink to be visible or not. Wait, you, you can choose you can choose which which tattoo you want today. You talk about pixel tats almost. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, look up it. Look at look it up on uh, on YouTube. Uh, programmable I'm, tattoos or something. I'm, or... I'm not even my own Google bitch. <laughs> I don't look up shit, Whatever. Rick. Whatever, bro. I don't look up shit, Rick. Don't look it up. Don't look it up. I mean, I forbid you to look it up, actually. Dude, don't be so mordinary. <laughs> Dirty Rick Sanchez, motherfucker. <coughs> um, oh, 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 so back to that. This is actually related real quick. So, yesterday we, we really decided um, that... And like for people who work in voice, right? Say that for the next ten years you walk around Patagonia, which is going to be tough because of the connection status. But main, the main thing that you would be doing is doing voice, right? If you're a really smart person, you can, you should be. I think, I mean, some images, sure, but you should be communicating with your coworkers by voice, right? You should be talking with them fucking directly. 
even even AI, I think you should be saying specific series series of words to these machines. So all you really need is a headset, right? I think we can make a silent Discord headset that works like the Apple Watch, and that like you don't need your fucking phone, bro. Like if you if you're part of a sufficiently intelligent network, and you're and you have an extra micro SIM that matches that that's in your phone, the headband of your headphones al- alone gives you a massively increased uh, cellular signal access, right? Like having a, a band of metal on the top of your fucking head gives you a tremendous antenna, right? Compared to a phone. Possibly. No, not possibly. What are you talking about? It's a fucking exposed strip, one inch wide by eight do inches. You want it? Do you want an antenna on your head? Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. It's also a it's also a tin foil hat shield. Don't get me wrong. So, basically, you just put on these headphones. And with those headphones, you can just fucking ask your any one of your Google bitches if you need help, right? If you need anything, and you and like you don't have a screen because you don't want to carry a phone and you don't want to have a screen, you just ask them, right? There's always techretaries. There are always people out there who will do shit for like point fiver, right? Like who will help you with anything, and they'll do it fast because they're at a desktop, they're in a cockpit, and that's it. Like you just ask for the help you need. Just speak. Speak. Use your words, motherfucker. And then you don't need a phone. You don't got to hold anything. You just put your headset on, and your headset is specifically designed to main, maintain a connection to our relatively decentralized Discord, like silent Discord. One of the things our headphones have to do, though, is to have a beautiful microphone pointing out on either ear, right? They, whatever that's called, I don't remember. You probably do. They have to have beautiful microphones. Like, they can't just be playing sound. They ha- And they can't have some little microphone hole. They have to have true bi-oral, I think it's called bi-oral, bi-oral stereo sound. Binaural. 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 Yeah. Polar bear, pol- well, no, 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 it's bipolar. <laughs> um, yeah, so we need good, really good microphones that can capture ambient sound, like listen for ambulances, listen for screams, catch the sounds of the birds. Also, because the more you hear, the better you can cancel, right? The better your receptors the, the, the less power you're going to need to cancel because you'll have a, a more true representation of the surrounding sound. So fuck beats, right? We'll make something like this. The point of these is to be able to communicate with your network, with your techretaries, with your Google bitches, um, with democracy, with Mindspace, simply by fucking talking. Like, simply by talking. Now, the cool thing is, you know, you wear headphones with a strap sometimes. What do you mean a strap? Like non earbuds, like true headphones with with the with the bar on top. I only wear true. I only wear true headphones. Now, have you ever like sat on camera and taken those headsets and just turned the bar so that it covers your eyes? No. It's it's really fun. Like we did an episode like that. Like, so, but in in that one inch strip, you can certainly contain a curved display, right? Now, if you pull that curved display close to your face, like. You're not going to see a full virtual reality world. You're not. But it basically becomes like a heads-down display. You like un- underneath the protective top layer, you can you can rotate out a clear layer. So you, you're basically just doing sound. But if you need if you need to see shit, if you need to see an overlay of the world in front of you from like the, where your feet are to maybe. Uh, 40 feet in the air, 100 feet ahead of you, like, you can do that with nothing other than an advanced set of silent Discord uh, headphones. And that shit is what we call Audioptics. Like, that name, Audioptics, used to be the idea just to put, uh, you know, MP3s into sunglasses, right? And Oakley did that 20 years ago. But I think Audioptics is a name that... I, I, I still have the first MP3 player here. Yeah? The first one, yeah. MP, MP Rio, MP Rio uh, by Creative was the first true MP3 player. It had 32 megabytes of, of uh, memory, and you could even um, make it give it extra 32. 32. So that was great. Um, yeah, I mean, this, the, like on, on one of those big memory cards, you know. <laughs> MP3, uh, MP3. Um, so it's obviously not MP3. It's just like I hope. I really hope that we, before we die, we are selling uh, products to like as a nonprofit with with engineers and managers earning well. 
like that. We are able to sell amazing headphones that have a, a heads down display that flips out when you need visuals. Um, that, that, that literally has the that, that display. The one thing that display can do amazingly is like if you're sitting in a chair somewhere and you want to chill, you want to read a book, you can slide down, you can pull out the the arch that's under the structural and the antenna arch and you can read a book like you can literally have that shit display gorgeous text to you most likely with or without background like it should be able to darken itself to absolute black you know like sunglasses can do today i mean we're talking about something that's not cheap but then so we have the headset and we have rings we absolutely have rings for fucking because you know sometimes you got to cover your mouth so hell doesn't read your lips right Sometimes you want to make a proportional rating for something, right? Like you want to take your thumb and push it up against your finger and you want to sque- you want to turn the ring with the amount of force that feels right, right? Like you see something and you like it, you want to like push on that ring. You want to turn that, that controller ring hard to, to add a non-specific but still, I think, accurate level of recommendation to it. So we got headsets, rings earrings and we have hearings right bluetooth earrings are about to fucking pop like crazy belt tech so we have electronic belts which are slightly like shielded by like a microscopic thick thickness layer of lead covered by something that prevents lead poisoning and then maybe shoes you know like piezo shoes and 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 then backpacks right and all of that shit if we do it right will essentially work together as a family of hands-free electronics right like when a kid puts on this backpack and these earrings that kid is good for fucking, like, probably in emergencies for weeks. Like, there's enough backup power in that backpack that even if they get lost, they're going to have, like, it'll go into a safe mode if they're in the fuck, if they're lost somewhere. But, and if they need, if they got a pair of our shoes, they can literally do fucking jump rope or jumping jacks and absolutely create enough power to, 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 to reach a satellite with a super low strength signal, which still identifies, like, I'm in fucking trouble and three satellites have received a signal from me. Right, three satellites have received a ping from me because I'm jumping up and down like a maniac, and that means that you can be found. Right, so we're saying, listen, is this a backpack that a kid takes to school to be an amazing student that's really using technology in a good way? Yes, it is. Is it also, is every piece of this also a safety system for children in a world when there's no greater danger than stranger? Yeah, every fucking piece, your shoes, your earrings, your fucking bracelets, your backpack, your headset, your glasses, whatever you got, that shit is capable of getting you triangulated if necessary. It's absolutely tracking. These are back tracks. Like, these are tracking backpacks. Like, these kids say, listen, we don't, like, no, we don't want to get hacked and kidnapped. The goal is the absolute opposite of that, right? So if a criminal sees a kid wearing any of our electronic on-body products, they do not fuck with our kid. We will, we will release unauthorized internet commercials literally showing the viewpoint of predators as they walk up to playgrounds, right? And we'll zoom in with their eyes and you'll see, oh shit, not that kid, not that kid, not that kid, not, oh shit, that kid. And all they do, all the kidnappers in the future do is, is steal kids who don't have hand alert uh, equipped electronics. So we say, listen, it, like, if you don't buy this shit, like, the odds are drastically higher that your kids will get kidnapped. That's advertising. Well, that's, that's America. The reason, that's, the, that's the reason. That's the reason why I always have three locks on my bike because everybody else has two. So, what do you think about this? I think we. I think we can make a lock from the snake snakeable family. I think we can make a lock that swallows its own tail, and is hard as fuck. Hard as fuck. Hard, hard is not always good. No, no, no. Hard as fuck to get through. Not hard. It's not hard. It's more Kevlar. Hard is breakable. No, it's more Kevlar. It's definitely more Kevlar, and it probably has an internal pressurized fucking ink reservoir. Like I think snakeables, like Kevlar and maybe like a titanium weave, like will be immensely strong. And when you wrap them around, like the smaller the area is, the more they swallow their own tail, and the more they reinforce themselves and become a nightmare to steal. I think Snakeables as a lock system is possibly a, a highly a high profit product, and it could be cool as fuck too. Snakeables originally were just little plastic snake heads that you put over the ends of your charging and sinking cables 
to, to protect the ends from damage and dust. And all you did was just grab them and you squeeze them a little bit and the little snake's mouth opens and you push it in. That's it. So they were like 0.1 cent Chinese products. But snakeables are now a whole family of different fucking things. We're gonna do. We're, we're gonna make. Like I made a joke recently about selling hoses that also carried like extension hoses, you know. <laughs> Which is kind of funny, right? Because you'd die. But if you don't run real electricity through the hose, if you just run a signal wire, like you can, like you can make a hose so that you don't even need. Uh, you can turn on and off the water at the main faucet, like just by like just with a tiny little fucking swipe on the head of the of the snake hose that like and like hose snakes are cool. People buy hose snakes. They buy like slightly more expensive snakes with really really cool patterns on them, where you, where the head of the fucking hose is a fucking snake's head, and when you squeeze it, he opens his mouth and he spits out water like a maniac. Yeah, you're not going to buy that at Rite Aid for $20. Like, that hose is probably a hundred fucking dollars, like, all-inclusive, right? But but it's cool as fuck. And some people buy cheap stuff. Some people go to the dollar store. Like, that. there's... I'm not trying to profit off dollar store people. We're not trying to profit off anyone, but we're not going to, like... We're not going to sell bike locks and fucking hoses and computer cables for, like, no extra revenue. Like, Snakeables are taking on monster cables, and I think we want mad revenue. We want to create decent jobs in factories supervising our, our production robots. We got a lot of products, dude, but Colorblinds, Colorblinds is better than probably all those things. But, but in a game, you still might have Condescend and Comic-Con. I'm a con, man. You're just a con, man. Clueless Ku Klux Klan and the Ku Klux Klan. Like, those are all cards, too, man. All that shit. They don't mean anything, right? They're tiny little word plays. They have no great value. But I would think that every card in the deck is kryptonite for some other card, right? Like, every card would have one total fucking weakness, ideally, right? Like, you play this super powerful card, but if the other guy has the true counter... Like you're fucked, right? Like you lose, like you're gonna lose that card. I think the odds that the guy has that card should not be high, right? The odds that they have the counter card should not be that high. But like some of the time, some of the time you're like, oh shit, I'm trying to play a game of risk, right? I'm trying to grow my civilization on this global board game. Other times you're like, this is this is also conversational. Like this is a social game, right? Like I don't only have to play the Great Wall of Mexico to try to split the American continent. Like I can also play funny things, right? I can also say things that cause the other people playing the game to laugh. And and that also gets you points, right? Don't front. Like if you make people laugh in this game, you get more points. Like you just if people laugh after you talk, you get extra points to fight with. And it's awesome. And if you can't make people laugh, well, you better rely on amazing gameplay because you're gonna miss all those. You're gonna miss all those extra points. And in the end, the person that wins is the person that the group thinks wins. That's who wins. It's like there's no, oh, you took over every like you win because other people like who also have supercomputers in their pockets and probably on their wrists, they decide that you win because they're we're actively curating the whole time. Like we don't fuck around when we make content. We want. We want brilliant ratings as far as is humanly possible without stressing people out. We want to know what the fuck we think of what. We want to know what's most popular. Like, absolutely. We want to know what's least popular, right? So if somebody finds some shit that's least popular, they can get paid, right? Somebody rescues a diamond idea from the bottom of the barrel. They should earn from that shit, right? Like, they they should. And there's good shit out there, right? There's shit in human history that was awesome and nobody even fucking got it, right? Nobody supported it. Maybe it took another hundred years to actually appear. We do not want that to happen, right? No matter how obscure or crazy it might sound, like, it might be a good idea. You know, it, 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 it might need somebody to, 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 to white knight that shit. Like, dude, I'm gonna, like, I found something and it, it's not popular, but, like, I'm gonna put a lot of my credibility behind it just trying to get at the attention necessary so we can find out is this really good and if you find something and you put your weight behind it and and it turns out to be good well you you deserve to be fucking compensated you deserve to be genghis compensated i got a genghis compensation satiation addiction 
Go, go to sleep. You should just listen to this and fall asleep. And just wake up like, what the fuck happened last night? Like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, what did I just dream about? Like, why is ALX hanging out in my dreams a little bit? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. My brain is fried. I don't... Yo, okay, last one. Ready? Ready. Frying saucers. Do we talk about frying saucers? Because they're awesome. Frying saucers are awesome, yeah. Frying saucers are depending, awesome. Depending on what they fry, of course. But. Well, yeah, but like they basically are a, a flying saucer which molds like two pieces of bread and a top and an, and, an, and an inside. You know, they make like a Hot Pocket, basically, right? Um in the shape of a frying saucer. So the thing that comes out of the frying saucer is the ex- looks exactly like the composite exterior of the frying saucer, which looks like a flying saucer. No, they're beautiful. And I think we can do it so that when you put the bread in or whatever the, like the pita, whatever the actual material that we sell or which you, you can probably do it at home. Um, hopefully we're able to kind of like mist, like when this thing closes, right? Hopefully we're able to have like a thousand nano holes that release a small amount of oil and kind of vaporize it near the ex- the outside of the bread. So instead of just like baking it, like we can actually, in a, in, a, in a carefully distributed way, add a little bit of oil, and then heat that oil, causing the outer the outer shell of the frying saucer to be sh- to be really shallow fried, right? To get the amount of frying that we want without any extra, like fuck deep frying shit, right? But shallow frying. Or having the act- the option to shallow fry can be a very good thing. Then you only use as much oil as you actually need. You use technology to apply it equitably. But shallow fry will cost you just as much oil as deep fry. No, every drop of shallow frying is actually absorbed into the bread before it's even heated. No, it, it will cost us only what we decide. There will, there will be no extra. We're not talking about taking chicken wings shallow frying them and then spinning them in a centrifuge to save most of the oil we're talking in that case we're using all the oil anything that goes into the fucking combustion chamber of a frying saucer is meant to be eaten all of it the 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 frying saucer is cousins with the centrifugal and the centrifugal is fucking hilarious too i'm not kidding dude the centrifugal is going to take out uh the george foreman it's only 9.30. It's fucked up. <laughs> also, also, one more thing. Uh, we are, we're, like, Even though it was in an episode of Family Guy, we are making Edward Murphy beds. Like, we're absolutely making, like, hilarious, like, extra-purposed Murphy beds. Like, they're not just beds, right? Like, we got some shit that rotates out of the wall, but it doesn't just, it doesn't just rotate a bed out. It, like, rotates a bed out. It rotates a crazy drafting table out, right? Like, and on the back side of it, it's got, that's probably where your white, your whiteboard is probably on the underside of your fucking Murphy bed. So we're going to sell, like, Murphy beds, Ed, Eddie Murphy beds. But a Murphy is, bed, you know, you know, a Murphy bed. I don't think you'll make it through the night. Why? Well, you know, Murphy's Law. Oh Jesus! It's not a Mur- no. It's not. You're not. You're not Murphy's lawyer. Shut the fuck up, troll. This isn't a Murphy's lawyer over here. Um, I think you mixed up Marshall with an artist. I said last night. I said I think I'm. I think I'm. What I think I think I'm cathars. I think I'm cathartic, right? I think I'm cathartic of this shit. I'm cathartic. I'm cathartic. I'm, I'm Jurassic as fuck. You're a fucking. Say, if you talk to older people, you say you're a you're a dinosaur loser. You're a dinosaur loser. So seriously, like kids are gonna love this shit. Kids love the disses, and like you are automatically grandfathered into the disassociation. So you can you you can have, you can have your little poet hut in. Uh, in 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 dystopia, don't worry about it. You'll be fine. You did put up your name. That was a big deal. Well, and, and my hobby. So we're gonna have to. You're gonna have to decide in in three years, like which of seven hundred different projects being done by a distributed democratic network are you gonna be working on? Right? There's gonna be so many things that different demographics are trying to build and so many demographics that you've at least said, fuck it, dude, I'm going to give you two cents. I'm going to give you my two cents worth 
because I want notifications and I want to be considered a conditional citizen of this project, right? Like, I'm not investing, but here's my two cents. Like, I, I don't want to not invest, right? Like, I want to keep the door open. I'm not saying this idea sucks. I'm just saying I don't have enough time for it. And I want to bookmark it for later, and I happen to be willing to pay the two cent deposit. And deposit is not a deposit. It's a digital posit, right? It's something that you're saying. You're positing something. You're depositing something. We have deposit boxes, dude. We have everything. We have the best words. Trump made me the man I am. We have the best words. <laughs> we have the best words, dude. We will fucking crush you. You and I, you and I can always beat your ass. <laughs> Yeah, man, I'm going to go uh, and lie down because uh, I need I'm, to. <laughs> I'm, I'll keep lying up, okay? I'll keep being the Lion King. I'll be that white liar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll be that white liar while you get your needed sleep. I get my needed sleep, yeah, man. Are you, are you, deep, deep sleep. Dude, are you some kind of fucking sleeple? I'm a sleeple, yeah. I'm, I'm part of the sleeple okay. soon. You be a sleeple. I'm a fucking... I'm, I'm, I'm going to be part of the sleeple very soon. I'm gonna be uh, I'm gonna be that a werewolf. Look out for me in your dreams, man. Look out for look out for the no werewolves. If you end up in Utopia, no, no, no werewolves, yeah. Especially especially in Utopia, bro. There's no werewolves. That should be the story. Uh, it should man. be. I wish I, I wish I would, I would sleep long enough in one go to actually have dreams, but. Uh, <laughs> I don't. Talk to you later. Yeah. All right, yeah, that was good. Good work, man. That's uh, that's some shit right there. You put in some. Uh, thank you for your service. Latex. <laughs> Play Texas. Play Texas. Rubber. <laughs> Death in Texas. <laughs> <laughs>